All right, guys, we are back. It is so great to see you. Hope you had a great weekend and your Monday is starting off fantastic. Guys, Photography Talk episode 27. To kick things off, it looks like Canon's EOS R5 will cost less than $4,000. Now, in last week, Photography Talk episode, I spoke about the rumor that the EOS R5 would cost nearly $7,000. However, it turns out that the rumor was off mark because Canon Rumors is now reporting with high confidence that the EOS R5's price will be under $4,000. Yeah, that's a little bit better. This price point makes sense given that the R5 is the mirrorless version of the 5D, and the 5D Mark IV went on sale for $3,500 when it was released, so a sale price of $3,500 to $4,000 seems like a much more likely price for the R5. And of course, the R5 price has been closely guarded secret, but with the official announcement coming from Canon sometime in July, Luckily, we don't have too far to wait to really see what this sucker's gonna cost. Moving on over to Razer drops a new badass computer. Now, as many of you know, I've been testing out a 2019 version of the Razer Blade 15 Studio and have loved every second of it. Well, earlier this week, or last week rather, Razer released a 2020 version and guys, this thing looks pretty badass. Get a load of the specs here. First off, of course, it has the Windows 10 Pro in it, has an eight core 10 generation Intel i7 processor with up to 5.1 gigahertz of max boost. NVIDIA Quadra RTX 5000 GPU, a 15.6 OLED touchscreen with Corning Gorilla Glass, up to four terabytes of SSD storage, up to 64 gigs of dual channel DDR4 memory, and of course an upgraded backlit keyboard. Now, I think the most exciting thing about this new Razer is the addition of the eight core processors. This is something that you couldn't get before and that extra boost is certainly going to be pretty awesome. Well, there is one other item that really excites me about the new 2020 version. In the 2019 version, the only thing that I found a little wonky was the positioning of the keys on the keyboard. The lower right hand side was a little, eh, a little, little dicey. Anyway, with the 2020 version, apparently uh, Razer has fixed that and they made some upgrades to the keyboard as well. So, yay. <laughs> All right, of course the studio version gets the incredible NVIDIA Quadra RTX 5000 GPU, which my friend is the best graphics card that you can buy. Now this bad boy is available for $4,299 right now. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can get more information or you can pick up one for yourself. Now here's some good news. Some states will soon let photo studios reopen. Washington, of course, was hit hard by COVID-19 outbreak, but the state is making headway in reopening, and that includes issuing rules for photography studios to be able to reopen this month in June. The guidelines announced by Washington governor are the first in the US specifically for photographers. To reopen, photographers and studio owners must frequently sanitize any props, have no more than one subject in a studio at a time, and photograph as many clients as they can outdoors. Now, if you ask me, these aren't strict guidelines by any strength of the imagination. I think most photographers would have done something like this regardless, but it's good to see that Washington has made moves to help photographers safely get back into business. Now in Sony news, Sony has a new compact camera. Ready for this guys? just for vloggers. So for you aspiring YouTubers out there, Sony might have a new camera that's really up your alley. Sony announced the ZV-1 earlier last week, and it's a camera that is video focused and is very similar to Sony's RX100 lineup of compact cameras. This camera has vlogging friendly features like a big gigantic record button, a front facing record indicator, a fully articulating screen with a recording lamp, and a huge built in directional microphone in face priority auto exposure. Other goodies include a 20.1 megapixel, one inch stack CMOS sensor, a 2870 equivalent 1.8 to 2.8 lens, and a fast autofocus system, including real-time eye autofocus. There's a focus switch that creates blurred background effect, and there's a product showcase setting that allows the camera to easily switch focus from the face of a person to a product that they're showing off. 
Next, of course, built-in ND filter, and of course, 4K video. Now, it looks like Sony took the most important video specs from the RX100 and stripped away some of the features that made the RX100 lineup expensive in order to make a solid video camera at a much lower price. Speaking of price, the ZV-1 is on sale for $748, and I'll put a link in the description as well for that if you want to get more details or pick up one for yourself. Next, OnePlus is ditching their camera that can see through some types of clothing. Okay. In this week's honest news, smartphone company OnePlus revealed that they will be temporarily disabling the color filter function on their OnePlus 8 Pro phones. This move is a response to the discovery that the camera can see through some types of clothing. The camera has a superpower because it has a 5 megapixel infrared camera to render photos. The goal of this filter was to enable users to be able to create interesting photo effects. Well, unfortunately, it could also see through clothing material that is transparent under infrared light. Whoops. <laughs> In fairness, looking at the photos, you can't see all that well through clothing, but still, it's definitely more revealing. Now, it isn't clear how OnePlus will get the color filter back up and running again, but until they figure it out, the filter simply has been disabled. Next, mirrorless camera sales are down 74% in April. Reports on mirrorless camera sales for March were not good. They were down 50% in Japan compared to 2019, but April numbers were even worse. Now, according to BCN Retail, mirrorless camera sales figures in Japan were down 74% from April 2019. While it is still no surprise that these numbers are really bad, it is a little surprising how quickly these numbers are falling. What's even scarier is the drop in camera sales still has a hint bottom. Canon and Sony Olympus reported sales dips of nearly 80, 75, and 74% respectively. That's a tough pill to swallow as these companies try to look at the future and figure out what it looks like for the camera division. SIPA should have their April report out soon, and that will give us an idea of how bad the sales were in the U.S. and other locations. I think we all can agree that whatever the numbers are, they're going to be pretty bad. All right, guys, that's it for the week's news. Our current contest has, of course, ended, so you'll want to stay tuned for the announcement of the winners in our next Photography Dog episode. We'll also announce the next batch of prizes you can enter to win. Well, there you go. If you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button down below. If you are currently not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, Hit the bell to be notified each time we come out with a new video. All right, guys. Well, there's a lot happening in the world and specifically in the U.S. these days. So you stay healthy, stay safe, and create your best shot.